welcome to It's Not What You Know! Hello, I'm Joe Lysett. If you're wondering who I am, take Julian Clary, Alan Carr and Graham Norton, put them in a room, lock the door and watch my career thrive. <laughs> This programme is not about what you know, it's about who you know. And most importantly, how well you know them. Every week we get three guests and ask each of them to nominate someone they know to get rung up by me and asked a lot of questions. You know the sort of thing. What's your favourite song? What's your favourite film? What's your mother's maiden name? What are the last three digits on the back of your card? All innocent stuff, you know. <laughs> tonight's panellists have to guess the answers their nominees gave and if they get enough of them right, they'll win tonight's star prize, a £10,000 kitchen diner. <laughs> Sorry, I misread that. That should have been working for ten weeks in the kitchen of a diner. <laughs> It'll be mainly back-breaking prep work, but you'll certainly learn the truth of the old saying, you can't make an omelette without breaking eggs. <laughs> but who'll be enjoying this opportunity to break into the competitive world of catering? It'll be one of tonight's guests, Andy Parsons, Vanessa Feltz and Tom Parry! <laughs> First this evening, we say hello to writer and stand-up comedian Andy Parsons. Andy's recently left BBC Two's Mock the Week after nine series. I suppose there's only so long you can mock a week before it starts to seem like bullying. <laughs> According to Wikipedia, Andy Parsons' dad is Nicholas Parsons, but that's because I edited Andy's Wikipedia before the show. <laughs> Did you know he also invented Velcro and is married to Noel Edmonds? <laughs> Andy, tell us who you've nominated to answer our questions this evening. He's my ears and my eyes. He protects me. I often fall asleep in his company and he spends an awful lot of time in his pants. Sounds like Nicholas Parsons to me. <laughs> uh, let's see who you've chosen. My name is Tom Elliott. I'm a tour manager. I live in Bristol, and Andy is my friend and touring companion. By touring companion, I assume that means you share the same single bed, is that right? That's it. That's all we afford on tour. Well, it's not. We could afford more, but I like it that way. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome Andy and Tom. Next up, we welcome Vanessa Feltz. Vanessa hosts the early morning breakfast show on Radio 2, where her 5 to 6.30 time slot has given her a bird's eye view on the metaphorical and literal car crash that is now the life of Chris Evans. <laughs> <laughs> Too soon. According to Wikipedia, Vanessa Feltz is fluent in over 700 languages and invented a pen called the Feltz Tip. <laughs> Vanessa, who have you picked for us to question? I have picked a gentleman who is my platonic heterosexual best friend. He's my friend of, I suppose, coming up for 20 years now, though he looks much too young. You would never believe it, and so do I. Um, he is obsessed by punctuality and has never, ever eaten even one morsel, one mouthful between meals. Wow. Well, let's find out who you've gone for. I'm Marcel Nobel. I'm a expert in branding. I live in Little Venice, and Vanessa is an extremely good friend. Incidentally, we played that at double the original speed that he's playing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Marcel is an expert in branding, which I believe is the practice of burning letters and symbols into the flesh of criminals. Is that what he really does? Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. Welcome, Vanessa and Marcel. And finally, we're welcoming Tom Parry. Tom is one third of comedy group Pappies and was one of the stars of the sitcom Badults, described by many industry observers as the final nail in the coffin of BBC Three. <laughs> <laughs> According to Wikipedia, Tom Parry doesn't have a page on Wikipedia. Tom, how did you decide? <laughs> oh, wow, is that who'd... true? Oh, I like this. It's like Jeremy Carl, this sort of <laughs> Tom, how did you decide who to choose? Um, this is someone who I've known uh, for over 25 years. Um, he's been my housemate, my best friend, my colleague, my bedfellow. Um, I've known him since he was about nine years old when he used to come around my house and wet the bed. And <laughs> we still go out drinking together and he still comes around my house and wets the bed. <laughs> um, well, let's hear from him. My name is Ben Clark. I'm a performer. I live in Crystal Palace and Tom is my best friend. Yes, in fact, Ben is in the sketch group. Yeah, I know, sweet. <laughs> in fact, Ben is in the sketch group Pappy's with you, isn't he? Along yes. with your other friend, Matthew, who presumably you both like a bit less than you like each other. 
Is that right? <laughs> I actually delayed telling him about being on this show until today, and Matthew said, oh, so who have you chosen? Oh, and no. I'd say, um, it's Ben. <laughs> how, well, how did he take it? He just went quiet. Oh. So. <laughs> I wish I'd chosen Matthew now. That would have been beautiful, wouldn't it? If you're listening, Matthew, nobody likes you. <laughs> Welcome, Tom and Ben. Round one is where we ask your nominees lots of questions to find out everything they know about you. And then you have to try and guess exactly what they've said. Andy, we've asked your tour manager, Tom, what is the best piece of advice Andy has ever given you? Now, what do you reckon Tom will have said? I think it may be to do with his sat-nav, which he refused to replace. It was like five years old. He hadn't updated it. And we were once... We were turning out to go to a gig. I think it was Derby and we turned out onto a dual carriageway and started going the wrong way. And it was a car flashed past in the other direction. And I said, Tom, we're going in the wrong direction. At which point we did a Yui on the dual carriageway and we went for about 10 minutes, didn't say anything, both white as a sheet. And then he just goes to me, I'm sorry. And we never spoke about it again. <laughs> well, let's see what Tom thinks. Don't drive the wrong way on a dual carriageway. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's good. It was funny that we've never spoken about it since, but we both knew exactly what it was going to be. <laughs> yes, Andy's best advice to Tom was not to drive the wrong way up a dual carriageway. That sounds to me a little bit like a euphemism for something. It was. It was when we were in the single bed together. <laughs> <laughs> OK, all right. I'm going to give you two points for that. Vanessa, now it's your turn. We put this question to your friend, Marcel. What sort of person does Vanessa most dislike interviewing? And I mean that in terms of occupation. What will Marcel have said? Is there anyone that you really have hated interviewing? Um, politicians are quite good fun because you can skewer them and watch them wriggle in <laughs> agony as you wow. hoist them on their own petard. So politicians are quite good fun. Um, comedians are very difficult to interview because they can be hugely curmudgeonly about giving you any of their good material. So they come on and they're resolutely unfunny. <laughs> and you think, mate, say something funny for God's sake, don't you? You sound like the voice in my head. <laughs> this is really good. <laughs> yeah. Be funny. Oh, God, be oh, God. Funny. Like a so fever I, dream. I don't know what Marcel would have, but the rudest and least cooperative and most utter abominable individual I ever interviewed was Madonna, who was just <gasps> ghastly. Oh, I love ghastly. it. She sashayed in a good nine hours late. It was a So she was doing the afternoon show. <laughs> there were journalists from all over the world waiting, congregating to interview her. It went during Evita, when Evita came out. And, you know, there were Danish people panicking and Japanese people, because everyone was missing their deadline all day. Everyone and Argentinian people crying. Argentinian people crying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. And she was just abominably and hideously rude to all. It's but amazing, but, she but I'm not allowed across... to say that. I have to say a genre, do I? Yeah. I'm going to say comedians. OK, comedians. Well, let's ask Marcel. I know Vanessa doesn't always find it easy interviewing comedians. <laughs> yeah. I could swear I've never said that to him. Somehow he's managed to get slower as well. <laughs> Yes, Marcel told us that Vanessa doesn't find it easy interviewing comedians. Well, don't worry, you can ask me absolutely anything, Vanessa. I have no safe word. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to give you two points for that. Thank you. Tom, let's pop your It's Not What You Know cherry. We asked your friend and co-star, Ben, yes. what is the worst gig you and Tom have ever performed together? <laughs> what do you think Ben will have said? Um, we've had quite a few, actually. We once had to do an all-male production of Macbeth in a maximum security prison. <laughs> That did not go down very well. Back in our days of doing theatre in the community, and we had a rule, never say no to a gig, that we immediately changed after that day. <laughs> um, I think our worst gig, though, um, would have to be Nottingham. Definitely a time in Nottingham where uh, we were slow clapped off the stage oh. and they booed us and we didn't go back to Nottingham for about six years. <laughs> the slow clap gig in Nottingham. Well, let's mm. find out from Ben. It was a bank holiday weekend in Nottingham and uh, we were booed off, but before that, uh, Matthew came on stage in a medieval costume as a minstrel and Tom said, uh, who's this? And an audience member stood up and shouted, it's just one of you in a hat and he's still shit. <laughs> <laughs> it was brutal. Yeah. It's difficult when the audience are funnier than you are, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Two points there. Andy, we're back with you. We asked Tom, what job is Andy least suited for? What do you think Tom will have said? Maybe passenger. <laughs> <laughs> Have you had any uh, jobs before you were a comic which you were particularly bad at? I loads, absolutely loads. I worked as a brickie for uh, eight weeks and I managed to, um, well, I was supposed to knock down a wall, but I didn't knock down the right one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the worst job, it could possibly be any job in the town of Dorchester, which was uh, our equivalent on the last tour of um, Tom's at Nottingham, quite possibly. Mm. There was loads of drunk ladies in the front row. It was, it was one of those where they'd go, oh, no, she is awful, you're right to tell her off, and then they'd go on a little five-minute monologue themselves. Yeah. And so yeah, yeah. it was like playing whack-a-mole as soon as one, <laughs> one of them would pop up saying something else. So any job in the town of Dorchester I might struggle with. <laughs> OK, well, let's go with any job in the town of Dorchester. Tom? I think Andy would make a terrible ninja. He hasn't got the <laughs> stealth ability. Not sure ninjas are in Dorchester, to be honest. <laughs> to be fair, most people would make a terrible ninja, wouldn't they? <laughs> You're not walking along the street and you go, oh, look, there's a ninja. That's because they're good at their job. Yeah. Ah. Uh, so no points there, unfortunately. Vanessa, we're back to you. We asked Marcel, what is the title of Vanessa's 1995 book of sex tips for women? What is it, and do you think Marcel will get the answer right? Well, I know the title of my own book, obviously, and it's autobiographical in every sphere and possible facet, and it was called, What Are These Strawberries Doing on My Nipples? I Need Them for the Fruit Salad. <laughs> Would Marcel know that title? You see, Marcel's a man of hidden depths. I have to say, that's why. He's my good pal. He's enigmatic. He is elusive. He's quite evasive. He's absolutely weird in many respects. That's why he fascinates Do you me. think he would have read the book when it I came out? I wish now that we'd had sex. <laughs> <laughs> Sexual platonic best friend for years and years. We've never done it or even anything else. We've never well, even. Let's get, some, even let's get some strawberries and let's have a go. <laughs> I think he does know the title. Okay. He does. Marcel? Oh, I know exactly what it looks like, as in the cover. Uh, it was. Uh, it, oh, the cover, I think, was full of uh, cream and uh, some. Fruit. fruit. Um, but I'm trying to remember the title of it. Um, but, oh, it was. Um, it was obviously relevant to the fruit. Um, oh, hang on. Hang on. Um, you know, I know it was. It was. It was strawberry. Yes. But it was something like um, why. Um, why are the strawberries on my breasts or something of that nature? Oh, what are these strawberries on my breasts or nipples? Or it was something like that. I was so young when this recording began. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I'm going to give you was that? Almost, that was pretty yeah. damn good. This was a man who was described earlier as charismatic. He is! <laughs> Magic. Yes, Marcel made a reasonably decent, although rather lengthy, stab at the title <laughs> of Vanessa's masterpiece, What Are These Strawberries Doing on My Nipples? I Need Them for the Fruit Salad. Anyway, it's a great book. I keep a copy in my toilet. Mum keeps asking me to fish it out. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to give you two points for that. Tom, it's your turn. We mm. asked Ben, what is Tom's worst habit? Oh, what do you think your worst habit is? Well, I do audible burps. Um, not I've got a great s skill, is it? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, <laughs> <in> Nottingham. <laughs> Here's what I think Ben will say. I get a tune stuck in my head and I sing it all day and then it passes on to him and he gets it stuck in his head. So I give him the tune that's stuck in my head. Normally the first line of Muppet's Christmas Carol. Like when a cold wind blows, it chills you, chills you to the bone. That, that's always in my head. And now it's in all of ours. Yeah. <laughs> so I would say, oh, I think that's what he's going to say. Yeah, that is irritating. <laughs> ben, what is Tom's worst habit? He has a tendency to take off his clothes a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's that as well, yeah. <laughs> Yes, Ben says that Tom's worst habit is his tendency to take his clothes off. Mm. I'd be quite happy for Tom to take his clothes off. It would give me a break from constantly undressing him with my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> it's got saucy in here all of a sudden. <laughs> and, uh, 
Well, sadly, no points there, though. That is the end of round one. And in third place is Andy, in second place is Tom, and in the lead right now, it's mm. Vanessa! <laughs> round one was all about finding out what the nominees know about the panellists, but round two is where we see how well the panellists know the nominees. Andy, we're going to see how well you know your friend, and let's be honest, employee Tom. We asked him, Tom, what is the most memorable moment you have ever shared with Andy? What do you think he might have said? And he's already done the dual carriageway thing. Well, possibly my favourite moment was we were doing a DVD in Margate and we were, we're looking... selling them or... <laughs> As it, <laughs> uh, after the gig, we had to do some DVD extras and there's a derelict crazy golf course in Margate and we went down the local sports shop, got two putters and a couple of balls and we broke in to the crazy golf thing and we played gorilla golf and it was the most brilliant game of crazy golf ever. The sun was just setting in the distance. We had the single bed to go back to. You know, <laughs> it was just a really heavenly moment. OK, well, let's see what Tom says. Me and Andy broke into a disused mini golf course in Margate. Yes, Tom says the best time he has ever had with Andy is when they broke into a mini golf course in Margate. What I'd like to know is why would anyone break into a mini golf course when Margate has so much else to offer? <laughs> <laughs> Including RG Scott's Furniture Market, the Viking Coastal Path and the Tom Thumb Theatre. Margate, you'll come for the day, but you'll stay for one and a half days. <laughs> Two points there. Vanessa, let's see how well you know your friend Marcel. We asked Marcel, Marcel, if you could commit any crime and get away with it, what crime would you choose? What's he going to oh say? Oh, God. He's a pillar of the community. He's got one crime, though, <laughs> He's not now. sitting around in his pants breaking into golf courses. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I can think of is something like, you know, stealing an exquisite work of art so that he could bask in its radiance. Uh, write a, an interesting critique of it for The Guardian and then donate it to an orphanage. Something of that kind. <laughs> I did nothing. He would never commit any crime. OK. N no crime. Marcel, name your crime. Breaking and entering into a whole host of interesting homes and palaces and so forth. Breaking and entering. Well, that, that was quite common. That was also, I wasn't bad when I said a museum yeah, and a like, work of yeah. art. Yeah. That was, that was Right kind of that idea. Close. I like he said a whole host of them, like he got really <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was kind of cultural. It. Look at the antiques, the marble frescoes, the Etruscan no points. murals. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Give you half a point. Sorry. No, yes. no I was really because I was on. Come on, he's not it's criminal. A, Is a, this why you have problems interviewing comedians? <laughs> 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 Tom, Ben obviously has some embarrassing information about you, but yes. do you have any on him? Because we asked Ben, Ben, if you could be in the cast of any West End musical, which one would you choose? What do you think Ben's going to say? Gosh, that's a good one. I mean, he likes dancing and he can sing. That's two of the requirements for a West End musical. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go with Greece. OK, let's go with Greece. Ben, what have you gone for? I'd like to be in Les Mis. Oh. Does that surprise you? I guess we have sang a lot of Les Mis songs together on road trips. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe it makes sense. Nothing gets rid of a few hours on the motorway like Les Mis. Oh, <laughs> cracking. I think Ben should be in Les Mis. And I'm going to start a petition. Who wants to sign it? Will you join my crusade? Who will be strong and stand with me? Then join in the fight that will give Ben the right to be free. No points. <laughs> And that's the end of round two. Ooh. And in joint second place is Andy and Tom, but out in the front still is Vanessa. <laughs> These are the rules for round three. I'll read out the answer to a question, and what you have to do is tell me which of our three nominees gave that answer. Was it Andy Parsons' tour manager Tom, Vanessa Feltz's friend Marcel, or Tom Parry's friend Ben? Now, let's crank the tension up even higher because we're going to bring in some buzzers for the next few questions. If you buzz in and you're wrong, a point will be deducted from your overall score. As Nicky Campbell used to say on the Wheel of Fortune, there's no way I can get through this without the meth. <laughs> So, fingers on buzzers. Which of our nominees, Tom, Marcel or Ben, said that the historical figure they'd most like to be is Nelson Mandela? 
Vanessa? I know who this is. I think it's Marcel, my dear platonic friend. Well, let's find out. Nelson Mandela. Yes! It's Marcel! Yes, Marcel said the historical figure he'd most like to be is Nelson Mandela, a man who spent 27 years in prison (laughs) and then got to meet Jerry Halliwell. (laughs) So, out of the frying pan, into the fire. (laughs) Two points there. Here's another one. Which of our three nominees, Tom, Marcel or Ben, said that their biggest celebrity crush has always been Jet from Gladiators? (laughs) Tom? That's Ben. That's definitely Ben. We share the same crush um, and have done since we were about 14. So I'm definitely going to go with Jet. Ben, you mean? <laughs> oh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> sorry, <I'm> not... <laughs> oh, I got completely distracted then. You, you oh, got my. lost in your own head then, didn't you, Tom? Yeah. <laughs> Let's hear the answer. Jet from Gladiators. It's Ben. Yes, Ben has always had a crush on Jet from Gladiators. My favourite Gladiator wasn't Jet. It was Maximus Decimus Meridius, father to a murdered son, husband to a murdered wife. Now I'm only joking, it was Cobra. <laughs> Fingers on buzzers. Which of tonight's nominees, Tom, Marcel, or Ben, said that if they could be reincarnated as anyone, they would choose myself, but better? That's Tom. That sounds like the kind of thing Marcel would say, I think. Okay, let's see if you're right. I'd come back as me, but just a bit better. It was Ben. You lose a point. He should come back as Jet, and then you're right in there, aren't you? <laughs> Uh, You lose a point. Just time for one more. Which of our nominees, Tom, Marcel or Ben, said that if they could travel to any point in history, they would go back to the last days of Sodom? (laughs) Vanessa? Tom, I think it's all that time in a single bed. (laughs) There's a logic. Let's see who it was. The last days of Sodom. It was Tom! (laughs) I mean, wow. Did that surprise you? Yep. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, it was tour manager Tom who fancies life in the last days of Sodom. And who can blame him? I'd like to have been there for the first days of Sodom. I always say, if it's a good party, make sure you're there at the start. (laughs) Two points there. It's the end of round three. And in third place is Tom. In second place is Andy. And out in the front is our current leader, Vanessa. It's time for the final round. I can't be the only person who is literally sodden with excitement. (laughs) We call this round... One Massive Question. (laughs) The reason we call it One Massive Question is because it's a round that only consists of one question. And that question is, wait for it, keep waiting for it, wait for it some more. Massive. This is the kind of question that will tell us once and for all just how well you know your nominee. The stakes are high. Answer wrongly and your relationship with your nominee may never be the same again. We've seen friendships end and families torn apart on this programme and I have to say we've enjoyed every minute of it. <laughs> because it's a massive question, it's worth a massive four points. Ooh. Tonight, the one massive question is this. What noise does your nominee think a moose makes? As you can tell, at this point in the programme, it's only the life or death questions that get asked. Now, to make it easier for you, we have a recording of a moose that we're going to play in for you now. It's an impressive noise. I heard something similar the other day at Marleybone train station coming from two cubicles down. Why there was a moose in there, I don't know. That is the noise a moose makes. But will your nominees get it right? Tom Parry. Think about your friend and comedy co-star Ben. Does he know what sound a moose makes? I mean, this is how I think Ben's brain will have worked. I think he'll have heard moose and he will think that it moos because of the moose. So I think he's going to go for something along the lines of... So, not the sound of a moose. I think he's not going to be able to, no. Let's find out, Ben. What noise does a moose make? Moose! (laughs) Oh dear, a valued friend and colleague he may be, Chris Packham, he is not. (laughs) Four points, Andy Parsons. Think about your Sodom-loving tour manager, Tom Elliott. We simply want to know if he has any idea what noise a moose makes. Will he know the answer, Andy? My guess is he made a random animal noise that could possibly sound a bit like your moose. 
he would have gone for something like <laughs> now that was, my, that was really beautiful my, my guess is that you could be generous and give him half a point for trying but it, I think he won't have got what you require ok it's time to learn the truth Tom what noise does a moose make moose <laughs> Yet another testament to the UK's failing education system. <laughs> Both Ben and Tom believe that the noise an animal makes is simply saying its own name. <laughs> Other animal noises they believe exist presumably include cow, sheep <laughs> and zebra. <laughs> so four points there. Yes. Vanessa Feltz. Yes. It's all come down to you now, Vanessa. Yes. We've learnt a lot about your slow-speaking friend, Marcel, his love of Nelson Mandela and breaking and entering. <laughs> what we don't yet know is whether he can correctly specify the noise a moose makes. Picture Marcel, Vanessa. I Get am. inside his mind. Feel your way to the answer. What is Marcel going to say? I don't think he thinks a moose goes moose. I don't think so. Or a goose goes goose. I don't think he thinks that. I would love it if a goose went goose. So would I. <laughs> or a turkey went turkey. But I'm, 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 I'm torn between the noise of eating moose, dollops of moose, and an actual moose making a moosey noise that we heard at the beginning. Okay. I don't know what to say. I'm sure you'll argue for the points no matter what you say. I will. I'll try hard. I'm going to strive. <laughs> I mean, literally, it's yes or no. Does he know? Yes, he knows. Come on, Marcel. What noise does a moose make? Silent. He said silent, they're silent. Well, there you go, Marcel. Another display of woeful moose ignorance. What do you think of that, Mr. Moose? Sadly, no points. That's the end of this week's It's Not What You Know. So let's see the final scores, and it's all change. In joint second place is Tom and Vanessa. And the winner of the show, and off to the kitchen diner for ten weeks of being unable to get the smell of fat out of their hair, it's Andy! <laughs> so close! That's it. Thank you to all of our... Come on, Del, I'm never speaking to him again, and that's it, the friendship is... What do you mean, silent? You're going to be as silent as a moose. Do that. Silent? What noise does a moose make? Silent? A broken friendship. What a lovely finale. <laughs> Sadly, that's the end of the show. Thank you to all of our panellists, Andy Parsons and his tour manager, Tom, Vanessa Feltz and her ex-friend, Marcel, <laughs> Tom Parry and his friend, Ben. And until next time, just remember, it's not what you know. Bye-bye! <laughs> it's Not What You Know was hosted by me, Joe Lysett. Some of the things I said were written by me and James Kettle with additional material by Aidan Butler. The show was produced by Matt Strong and it was a BBC Studios production.